Hi, greetings. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so I felt that uh, the, a need to continue one more time, even though tomorrow we are um, I will continue with the five wisdom. Uh, but uh, I thought maybe to do a one guided meditation with the meditation, uh, healing pain through meditation, and also to talk a little bit about the wisdom of emptiness. So uh, just to keep in touch a little bit more uh, closer. So that's, uh, that's my intention. So how is the meditation going, everybody? Are you all uh, practicing f informally five times a day? Uh, one or two times uh, for formal sessions? So, and uh, if you are doing that, so, uh, you know, how is as far as the pain is concerned, physical pain is concerned, how it's going. So general people's response is that people are, some people like something like a magic miracle happens, then they really like uh, overcome completely. And sometimes people say they have uh, reduced a lot. Sometimes they say it's still there, but they're managing better. So what is your situation? Wonderful. So I, I very much uh, wanted to hear uh, feedback from everybody. So, so first of all, uh, you know, also this um, um, five wisdom and particularly the wisdom of emptiness, or particularly, I mean, generally speaking, a wisdom and then particularly wisdom of emptiness, how this wisdom has something to do with our relation to our pain, you know, uh, according to Tibetan spiritual tradition and particularly also uh, like a Tibetan medicine, uh, that all the diseases and pain, uh, physical, emotion, all, emotional, all are connected uh, back to ignorance and five, has say three root poisons. So ignorance and three root poisons is the causes for everything. So if you think about that, so um, what is ignorance? Ignorance is lack of self-realization or lack of uh, realization of truth, the fact. Uh, and because of that, uh, the ignorant exists. Because of that, that five, three poisons exist. Because of that, then all the, um, uh, the, uh, Three humors according to Tibetan medicine, like a wind and bile and um, flame, all these through these three, then the whole all the branches of disease has come come. This is what is explained. So uh, it's a very kind of complex idea. But uh, just trying to keep it very simple here will be in in our own life, the pain that you feel the pain you have, uh, and also even maybe the some sense of sickness that one has. How does this sickness, blockages, pain, it's related to three root poisons, ignorance, anger, and attachment. So can you see, can you see your pain is connected or rooted or caused by ignorance, anger, and attachment. Uh, so I think maybe that's a good place to reflect. So somehow, if you are able to reflect, that, that means that uh, these three root poisons manifest in our li life because of lack of self-realization. Self uh, so that is basically what is wisdom of wisdom means the wisdom means uh, lack of um, 
Wisdom means the self-realization or realization of the truth. Uh, the ignorance means not knowing that. So does lack of uh, self-realization or presence of ignorance in our life, is it causing three root poison? Has three root poison has been um, like a causes of your sickness so that, or pain? So that's, the, I think it's sometimes on a personal level, I think it's a good to reflect that. So I think maybe before I go into talking a little bit about the uh, wisdom of emptiness, maybe we can do a short a short session of meditation. So I, uh, I will guide a short session, short session of meditation as like the last time. So we'll continuously do that and maybe this session helps all of all of us just as we are together here support us to do that so sit comfortably bring your full attention inward here, now, in your body, Take a deep breathing. Those of you know how to do the nine breathing purification, you do the nine breathing of purification. And those of you don't know, just take a deep breath. As you exhale, you exhale whatever discomfort, tension, efforts that you feel in this moment, in your body, in your breath, in your mind.
Bring your attention to your body. Be aware of the stillness. Feel the stillness. Bring your attention and awareness to your speech. Be aware of silence. Feel the silence. And gradually rest in inner silence. Bring your attention and awareness to your mind. Be aware of spaciousness, the openness, like a crystal clear sky. And gradually rest in that inner sacred space. And those of you who are feeling a little challenged by the meditation, just be aware and feel that we all are supporting each other. Receive support. Be open to receive support. And be open to give support. Hold the cyber sangha Practicing together here, this moment, we all are together, connected, supporting each other. Now gradually bring your open, clear attention toward the physical pain. Or emotional pain. If it's a physical pain, bring your full, clear, open attention to that location. Like you are entering right in the center of that pain. And you are your awareness of that sacred space, it's opening. Your awareness of awareness, it's illuminating, healing. And your warmth is giving strength and energy. So these three awarenesses, it's like a inner alchemy, it's like a medicine. Or this also this sense of giving spacious, luminous, warm hug, like mother bringing clear, open attention to a child who is in pain. That connection. You are that mother. Your pain is that child who is going through pain, experiencing pain. Just continue that as I play the Salewa Mantra.
continuously bring your open attention pure awareness and warm a sense of care like mother to the child And also imagine and feel that we are not only healing our own pain, all the people who are related to our pain, directly, indirectly. We are also bringing them in our prayer, intention, healing. So now gradually you can open your eye. How are you feeling? Apart from just feeling good, How's, how are you feeling? Maybe you can explain a little bit. I feel different, that's good. Relaxing, being calm is wonderful. And I think with some sense we all have to we need to know that, you know, this is a, a live collective practice of Cyber Sangha. So there is a special, clearly a special collective energy that is sometimes can luck in when individually when we are practicing by ourselves. So clearly we are all connected. We all are supporting each other. Um, beyond time and space. That's so that's what is happening here. So okay, so so let's talk a little bit about this connection with the wisdom of emptiness. So uh, let's say this way during the meditation when we are at least the way I where I understand, uh, understand where I guide this practice is that when I say be bringing your open attention to pain. So the word openness, unbounded space, it has something to do with dharmakaya or something to do with a wisdom of emptiness. Uh, emptiness is one way of looking at it. Uh, usually when we think about empty, emptiness, empty of something, we are referring to um, it's like an emptiness is a little bit harsh word to, for punishment for ego. Uh, you know, like being a little bit harsh. It's not, you're not trying to be harsh to yourself, but you're trying to be a little bit harsh to that harsh ego. Emptiness means that what ego sees or projects or creates illusory, illusory reality it's not there, therefore it is empty. Objectively, what ego projects out there, it's nothing there as ego projects. Like every single your problems that you have in your life, you have somehow projected out there. We have ability to project 
problems. We have ability to project wisdom, but very often we end up projecting more confusion and pain rather than a clarity and awareness. So emptiness is referring to that lack of inherently existing, nothing objectively, there is nothing out there, lack of, inherently there. In the same way, subjective, subjectively, your, your perception of pain identity, sense of self, is not, also not there. But you are experiencing it, same way you're experiencing the pain. And when you bring the pain into meditation, pain dis disappears. Think about it, how it's possible that pain disappears. The confusion disappears, or the stress disappears, the tension disappears. In some cases, maybe even sickness disappears. Because if mind is able to create it, mind is able to deconstruct, dissolve, heal also. But how mind does that? Mind does that with the awareness. So if you think about bringing open attention, open, so I'm trying to uh, directly relate this word uses your word openness, when I use the word openness, it's related to space, it's related to opening, clearing, emptying, emptiness. So that openness is directly linked with the wisdom of, the wisdom of emptiness. So for example, uh, if you if you are bringing your attention to, open attention to your pain in the body, let's say that pain or that sickness or that emotion has some direct link with the ignorance, so-called ignorance, and ignorance is so-called self-grasping, dangzi, or, or you can think about perception of pain identity, self-perception self of pain identity. When we bring open, open awareness to that, place or open, open awareness to that subject, it's able to clear that identity. When the identity is loosened up or cleared, the one identity is actually who is responsible holding the disease, pain. Pain is it's like a possessed by identity. Uh, when identity is released, because of power of awareness, it affects the pain. I don't know if is that making any sense. I mean, we all collectively, clearly we know something is happening here. Something's supposed to happen, and we are witnessing something happen. Not only we are saying believing, or we are not only talking, we are not saying, oh, meditation helps the pain and oh, supposed to help the pain and help the pain and so on. We, we are this very moment, we have witnessed something. It's like a more like a logically explaining, rationally explaining that what's happening, why it's, why it's happening. So that's why the wisdom of emptiness, it's related to the first part of the approach of, when we say spacious, luminous, warm hug, S spacious, luminous, warm hug, spacious has something to do with wisdom of emptiness. So how is the meditation? How, if, you're, if your ability to be more spacious, more open, see more open, feel more open, relate with more open, connect with the openness, rest in openness, rest without much effort, then clearly the healing process of the pain is taking place because 
you are opening, remaining in openness, you are not contracting, holding that pain or sickness with certain identity. You are giving a little break in that moment. That, that is uh, what is happening. And so generally speaking, like this five wisdom, you know, uh, in, within the Bairn tradition, like a, in a, a cosmology, like a Zhe, uh, has explanation, Shanxun Yinju in the Dzogchen tradition has explanation of five wisdom. Ziji, uh, I say Zermik, the medium uh, length of uh, biography of Tambashana Miwache, and there there is explanation. And so there are a number of explanations, different explanations. And then also in the other schools, there are a number of different explanations about the five wisdom. And sometimes, not necessarily, they all correspond to each other. And sometimes they are uh, different co co correlations on how the wisdom and emotion rep re represented. So I'm not go going to go and uh, get, get into that and make more confusing. So I'm going to try to stay one text, which is more Shangju Nienju. And in Shangju Nienju, um, so I just wanted to just say, read a little bit in Tibetan, even though those you don't understand Tibetan, uh, it's okay. Those you do understand, maybe it makes some little more sense. Tayan Simjungo, Tsemachiam, Madupe, Tongbani Ji, Shi, Tongba Te, Rangji, Ripachian Salve, Melonta Vu, Shi, Ripatan, Tongbani, Chudan, Oma Deva Shindo, Ye, Michebe, Nambani Ji, Shi, Nyamla Mande, Sosur Chebe, Sosur Tobe, Shi, Tilly Toba Meba, Rangji, Huji Tobe, Chava Tobe, Shi. So these are like a five um, wisdom in that particular sequence, it, which is explained in a Shangju Yinju Dzogchen tradition. So what is saying here in the first line is saying, there is no substantial inherent, our mind, the, in our mind as a subject, there is no substantial inherent. As you can see, if I ask you, what is your mind this very moment? Not only in your mind, one, one time friend of mine, he said, when he worked with his patient, he'd, he'd tell, talk to his patient saying, so what's your problem? What's your problem right now, this moment? So they, they just kind of look at themselves like a little bit like inside. What's my problem right now? Right now, what's my problem? What's my problem? Oh, I don't know what's my problem right this moment. When you immediately ask like that, it's very difficult to point. Even somebody asks you, who are you? You will not say I'm my head or my hand or my lung, kidney, liver. No, none of your parts of your body is not you. Your feelings are different. Feelings are not you. Your different thoughts are not you, different memories are not you. Who are you? So if you really experientially, nakedly observe yourself, search for yourself, you do not find a sense of self there. It just kind of vibrates disappears, it remains kind of empty. So that, and in, in epistemology, there are many logics, inherent, I say, inferential cognition, logics to prove that there's, there's no inherently anything exists. So emptiness. So in the Dzogchen tradition, uh, it doesn't focus so much on outer objects so much, but it focuses on more, even though we are all collectively interested in trying to understand what is empty, what is full, what is truth, 
but we are more interested to understand that by reflecting within toward ourselves and particularly sense of self identity who who are you so when you look who are you or your who's what is your mind this moment you cannot find anything simjungo chemachia madupe tomani je she so when you when you search and when you don't find anything when you find not finding anything that finding or that awareness is like a wisdom of emptiness of course again from a doctrinal point of view according to the dzogchen teaching uh these are considered as like that and more in some time like more in the sutric tradition uh the five wisdoms are more uh only the enlightened beings and buddhas possess these five wisdoms and uh uh the good news is in the dzogchen tradition that we all have this five wisdom and maybe we have a glimpse of these experiences of five wisdom when we introvertedly search nakedly who we are so that is the first one so that is the wisdom of emptiness and that's why its relationship to pain i think that's important part or even its relationship to the disease its relationship to the conflict probably if you look there is no one single conflict which is not produced by your identity there is no one single pain which is not produced by your identity therefore there is no one disease or sickness or pain which is not produced by your perception of pain identity pain i say, i say this word kind of maybe is a little bit new word perception of self identity i ch- sometimes keep on changing these words because uh, like for example in a, in buddhism generally speaking we say korwa korwa means samsara we say nangjin wangi dungal de chepa and the one who possess a pain as a result of grasping the one who possess pain as a result of grasping grasping dangzi wangki dungal dan chepa so you possess that discomfort or pain because you grasp what you grasp is this pain conceptual pain identity is what you're grasping so that's how so in order to dissolve any specific pain any specific disease any specific identity affliction emotion conflict it has to go back and it trace back to that sense of perception of pain identity either is individual sometimes it can be a collective there is a collective identity as a country um uh, that collectively whole country suffer or there is a collective identity of uh, or religion that particular religion suffers there is a collective sense of identity of a single family you suffer even a uh, a sense of identity a professional sense of identity whatever the sense of identity is there that does produces all these conflicts pain confusions so anyway so going back to uh wisdom of wisdom of emptiness how how it's related to to the the pain so that's what i'm trying to say so tongba tei rangji so i'm just maybe maybe briefly go through this five wisdom just general so we will be uh, next next t- next session which is tomorrow so tomorrow we will be uh practicing more and also we will be discussing about the wisdom of mirror like wisdom particularly mirror like wisdom so i think maybe i'll leave it there don't want it to uh talk too much and get more confused and not not uh, make any i have no intention to make anybody confused <laughs> okay so i hope this uh a little extra session was a little helpful
at least we all connect with each other. I have a little moment of remaining, sharing that beautiful silence, uh, beautiful moment of stillness, beautiful moment of spaciousness, and having this moment, little sense of connection through that. Through this connection, we also trying to connect with everybody else. So, so that's all for today. And so tomorrow, one o'clock New York time, uh, we will be uh, practicing more healing our pain, and then also with a little break, and then we'll be teaching on mirror-like wisdom. So uh, let all of your uh, friends, the friends, those who wanted to know, that you know they would care to know, they need a little reminder, uh, please go ahead and do that. So you can help us to connect more, so you can click few, but only people who do care to know. Don't click any any buttons that who don't care to know about or not, not don't want it to, you know, not interested. So we no intention to try to have people who are not interested, but trying to uh, remind, this is reminder to everybody who's so in interested. So, um, so see you tomorrow.